Hi there. Today, I want to talk to you about learning. Now, you might have seen the name of the video and thought, don't learn Esperanto. I thought that's why I loved teaching Esperanto. Oh, I do. And believe you me, we're here to learn it. The full name of the video would really be, don't use the wrong word for learn while speaking Esperanto. But that's far less of a titillating title. So, now that you're here, know that yes, you should learn Esperanto and you should avoid using the word learn incorrectly. How so? I thought learning is to learn, right? That's one of the easiest words there is in, you know, for an English speaker, learning Esperanto. Learning to learn. Good. Well, in English we might say, I'm learning Esperanto and I learned that the pronoun for he is Lee. That's totally fine in English to say that. You can say, I learned this big thing and I learned this one little thing. But in Esperanto, you don't do it like that. I was working on this book, the Marriage of the Muffin Man, or Le Nupto del Muffin Vendisto, and I sent the Esperanto translation to Lee Miller to look it over for any grammatical problems. And Lee told me, ooh, I noticed something. You said that the character learned about a jingle competition in a nearby city, and you said, Lernis pre concurso. You don't want to do that. I said, really? I thought learning is to learn. He said, mm, not always. So that's why I'm making this video, is because if I didn't know that, while writing my fourth book in the language, then if you're just getting started in Esperanto, you might not know this either. How does learning work then? When do we use it? When don't we use it? The easiest way to explain that to you would be to walk away from learning for a second and show you a different verb that has a similar MO. The word I'm talking about is studi. Studi is to study. Leggy is to read. Okay, you probably already knew that. So I could say, mi studis Leon Morton. I studied his death. Yeah, let's say we're talking about Abraham Lincoln. I, I researched the assassination of Lincoln. And you could say, mi legis Kelly mortis. I read that he died. Yeah, but you wouldn't say, mi studis Kelly mortis. You wouldn't say, I studied that he died. No, you read that he died while you were studying presidents of the United States, maybe. But you don't say studi for an individual fact. So you wouldn't put studi and ke next to each other, ever. Mi studis Kelly mortis. No, no, no. That's why there's asterisks there. So don't do this. You don't study, study, or learny, learn, individual facts. How do you do it then? Well, you leggy facts to study a topic. Similarly, you exce facts to learny a topic. Okay, yes, you read lots of little facts, and through the reading of little facts, you study something big. Similarly, you exce a lot of little facts, and through doing that, you find yourself learning, learning, something bigger. XCE. What, what is that? I, I don't know if I'm uh, fond of that word. It looks kind of ugly and hard to say and pronounce properly. Can I just avoid it? Well, no. Sorry. XCE is hard to say, but it's here to stay. So let's take a closer look at it. First off, Lerni. Lerni is to learn a whole art, a trade, a science, a language, a topic in, in general. So I might learn to become a carpenter, or I can learn a language, or I can learn mathematics. Uh, that is what we use when we are talking about learning. If you didn't study it, you probably didn't learn it. Okay? So that is what is implied there. A deep, repetitive, thorough investigation is what happens when you're learning something. So I'd say, mi lernas Esperanton. Absolutely correct. Mi lernis pri la juda culturo. You don't often say lerni pri. Usually you say ex pri. But here it makes sense because I am learned about the Jewish culture, a very wide topic. If I said, oh yeah, I learned about a jingle competition that's happening uh, for, for musicians, you wouldn't say lerni because you didn't like delve into that. There's not much up to that fact. It's just, yeah, a competition is happening. That's all? Yeah, I didn't learn that. I ex that. You could say, mi lernos aritmeticon. I will learn arithmetic in the lerneo, in the learning place, in the school. Yep, you'll learn math, but you don't lerni that 2 plus 2 is 4. No. Ex ce. What is ex ce? It means to learn a fact, to suddenly know something. And it's a, a combo of ce, which means to know, and ek, which means to start to or suddenly do something. So I begin now knowing this. So mi ek. I didn't know it before, now I do. So that's what we mean by ex -ci. And you'd use that uh, in sentences like this. Mi ex pri la morto de la princo. I learned about the death of the prince. I heard that it happened. Yep, he died. Prince is dead. But if 
you said Lenny there, uh, me Lenny's pri la morto de la princo, that would be like that other example of studying, researching the assassination of the prince, then, okay, yes, now I'm Lenny-ing it. But you don't want to accidentally paint that word picture, you're sitting here with a bunch of books about his death, and you would do that if you said, accidentally, mi lernis pri la morto de la princo, when you're really just saying, oh yeah, I, I was informed about that. Mi excios shian opinion morgao. I will learn her opinion tomorrow. Now, I'm not going to take a class in what her opinion is or anything like that. I'm not delving in deep. I'm just going to hear it and absorb it and have it. So that's where you say, yeah, I mean, I'll learn her opinion. Mal excios gene. Mi exciis que she dormas. I learned that she is sleeping. That's just a single solitary fact. The fact that she is sleeping, I will learn. So you'd say mi exciis that. So you don't put lerni next to que, you put excii next to que. Mi volas excii ion hodio. I want to learn something today. I want to learn a new fact today, let's say. Um, and I use that sentence simply because it has three letter I's next to each other. So make sure to pronounce clearly. You might find yourself with that. Mi volas excii ion. Okay? What are some other options? Now, we've given you XCE and you need to learn how to use it. That's why I'm giving it to you first, because you need to get used to seeing it and saying it and having that become a go-to word for, oh, I learned this and I learned this and I learned this. While learning Esperanto, I XCE this fact and this fact and this fact and this fact. There are other uh, verbs, though, that give you a range of flavors when you're saying, oh, I gained this knowledge and I acquired this knowledge. What are some other ones we have? More ways to learn. Malkovri is to discover, to uncover. Kovri is to cover, and the opposite of that is to uncover it, just like in English. Mi malkovris que li mortis. I discovered that he died. Informigis is to be informed of something. Mi informigis que li mortis. Totally fine to use ke with all of these. Constati is to realize or ascertain. I usually think of it in my head as to dawn on me. Uh, mi constatis que Li mortis. And I want you to note, constati, constat is a single root. It's not coni and stati put together. It's not. But if it helps you memorize it and to spell it properly, think of it as mi nun conas la staton. I am now familiar with the state of things, the state of the union here. I now know it, and so I ascertain it or I establish it to be true. So if that helps coni and stati, constatas, that's great. But don't mistakenly think that it actually is a... Uh, joined word of coni and stati, so constati, to realize or ascertain something. Ek consci, another tricky one to say, I don't think you're going to be like chomping at the bit to use this one, but it's good to know. I suddenly became conscious of the fact that this happened. So me ek consciis keli mortis. I became aware of the fact that he's dead because his, his body's not moving anymore. So that's where you might use that. Uh, Parkerigi is a little off the beaten path here. Uh, these are almost synonym-like. Uh, this one's a little different, but it shows a different flavor of learning. If I said I learn my lines as an actor, well, you wouldn't say mi lernis la linioin uh, or la texton often. You, you would usually uh, want to specify that mi parkerigis, I made them by heart in my head uh, to stay, to learn by heart, to memorize. So if I Sias something parcare or mi lernas parcare. That means I have it. I have it down pat. I have it down cold, like the back of my hand. So mi parcarigis la canton. I memorized the song. You can say mi lernis parcare la rolon. You can say lernis, um, but that does imply like a deep understanding, a deep research of it. So oh, Hamlet. Yes, I've really learned the role of Hamlet. I've embodied it. I'm imbuing it with my emotions and all that. Uh, I'm learning about other great performances of Hamlet. Yeah, in that case, you can say lernis, and you can say parcere, that you had it memorized as well. But if it's, you know, butler number three who walks in and says, good evening, sir. Did you lerni that role, parcere? No. You memorized your lines, you stood where they told you to stand, you said the line, okay? So that's a little bit of different flavoring there. But parcere is the, uh, parcerigi is the very act of committing something to memory. The way I remember that is I have an actor friend named Parker Campbell in Virginia, and I picture him memorizing his lines for, for a, a film. If you don't have an actor friend named Parker, then you can just think of it instead as, oh, these words are now parking in my memory. Like they pulled up to the drive-in uh, with all the words inside of the car, and they're parking there, and they're here to stay. So, mi parkerigis. You can say, mis tias parkere la planon. I know by heart the plan. Uh, it's parked in your brain. 
But note, you don't say uh, parcere mixed with excii, because by very definition, ec means suddenly, just started, it just began. Parcere implies a thorough, deep, and repetitive establishment of something. So you can't suddenly do something and thoroughly do something at the same time. So you wouldn't say mi excii parcere la planon. No, you, you don't really say it like that. If you take nothing else away from this video, just remember, lerni and ke do not belong together. Okay? Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.